By what sort of death was the universe covered? This is being answered by hunger or the desire to eat, which is a characteristic of death. How is hunger death? The answer is being given, for hunger is death. The particle he indicates a well-known reason. He who desires to eat kills animals immediately after. Therefore, hunger refers to death. Hence, the use of the expression. Death here means hiranyagarbha, as identified with the intellect, because hunger is an attribute of that which is so identified. This effect, the universe, was covered by that death, just as a jar, etc., would be covered by clay in the form of a lump. He created the mind. The word tat, that, refers to the mind. That death of whom we are talking, intending to project the effects which will be presently mentioned, created the inner organ called mind, characterized by deliberation, etc., and possessing the power to reflect on those effects. What was his object in creating the mind? This is being stated. Thinking, let me have a mind. Through this mind, Atman, let me be possessed of a mind. This was his object. He, Prajapati, being possessed of a mind after it was manifested, moved about worshipping himself, thinking he was blessed. As he was worshipping, water, an all-liquid substance forming an accessory of the worship, was produced. Here we must supply the words, after the manifestation of the ether, air, and fire. For another Shruti, Taitriya Upanishad, 211 says so, and there can be no alternative in the order of manifestation. Since death thought, as I was worshipping, water sprang up, therefore arka, the fire that is fit for use in the horse sacrifice, is so called. This is the derivation of the name arka given to fire. It is a descriptive epithet of fire derived from the performance of worship leading to happiness and the connection with water. Water or happiness surely comes to one who knows how Arka, fire, came to have this name of Arka. This is due to the similarity of names. The particles Ha and Vi are intensive. Namaste. So this concludes the commentary on Section 2, Mantra 1. And it's a biggie. Most of them aren't so extensive. Uh, but we'll find some later on in the Upanishad that are even more extensive. The point here is that in the beginning of creation, there was nothing, only space and maybe air. And the Purusha, who is sometimes identified with Lord Brahma and sometimes with Vishnu, and he is called Hiranyagarbha, or Virat, meaning everything, all beings combined, is hungry. He's hungry and he has no place to stay. So he exerts himself by worshipping himself, and the perspiration produced fills up the universe halfway with water, and then on that ocean he makes his residence, and this is Vishnu. And then Brahma is born from Vishnu and goes on to create all the living beings. So he's called Prajapati or the progenitor, the first 
father of everybody. And like father, like son. He was hungry. He wanted food. He wanted experience. He wanted to create something, make something in this big space. So he is the prototype for all of us. So we are also hungry. And if we don't eat, we die. This is the reality of life for all living creatures. From the top to the bottom, have to eat. So this sparks a competition for food. And we see that in the material world, it's eat or be eaten. This is the basic principle of material life. And this is why, or one of the reasons why, there's suffering. Huh? There's suffering in material life because for me to eat, someone else has to die. For me to live, I have to go out and kill at least plants. This is necessary. So, therefore, the Lord instituted a system of sacrifice. Sacrifice in the fire. The fire is the symbolic mouth of God. And by feeding God, we become immune to the sinful reactions of having to kill to feed ourselves. This is described extensively in the Chandogya Upanishad, that everything is food. Huh? Everything is food for something else. So when we see the competition in the material world for food, in order to stop the sinful reactions, the karma, from having to kill in order to eat, we have to offer this food to God. There's one very uh, important passage in Chandogya, which I'll read you now. Shankaracharya comments, the text proceeds to show how, in the case of the knower of the Vaishvanara self, the act of eating constitutes the Agnihotra offering. Thus, the food that comes first should be an object of libation, offering, so that when he offers the first libation, he should offer it with the words svaha to prana, and thereby prana becomes satisfied. Prana being satisfied, the eye becomes satisfied. The eye being satisfied, the sun becomes satisfied. The sun being satisfied, heaven becomes satisfied. Heaven being satisfied, whatever is under heaven and under the sun becomes satisfied. And through the satisfaction thereof, he himself becomes satisfied. Also with offspring, cattle, food, brightness, boldness, and Brahmic glory. So by offering the first food, uh, when food is prepared, the first serving or the first morsel coming out of the kitchen should be offered to the sacred fire. This is the same fire that is the Ahavaniya fire or the fire, the Arka fire, and that represents the sun. So by that offering, all the higher demigods and God himself become satisfied and everything underneath them becomes satisfied. And this is how we avoid the sinful reaction of having to kill at least plants. Huh? And, of course, animals are not offerable except in certain sacrifices. So meat-eating is like off the table, in a manner of speaking. <laughs> we can only offer vegetarian food to God. Why? Because God is prana. Prana is life energy. The prana sharira, or 
Pranamaya Kosha, the energy body, is the subtle body. And when that pranic body is fed, it takes on the qualities of whatever it's fed with. So if we feed animals, then when the animals are killed, they become fearful and anxious, and they're suffering. And so this brings fearfulness, anxiousness, and suffering to us. And in the same way, when vegetarian food, nice, you know, grains, vegetables, milk, and so on, when they are offered in the fire, this is wholesome. This is healthy. Uh, this satisfies God. So when this offering is made, and then we partake of that food, the prana is nourished. And then prana being nourished, the whole body becomes healthy. Now, it's very important that the prana is kept pure. And for this reason also, it's a bad idea to offer any kind of meat or processed food. Huh? Everything should be as simple and natural as possible. And this leads to purity and cleanliness of the prana, which is the life energy. And since the prana is the vehicle that carries the subtle body, huh? the mind, intelligence, ego, and consciousness, to the next body, that prana has to be pure. And then the next body, which is derived from the prana, is also pure. Now, this is the science of reincarnation or transmigration. That by keeping the body pure, by taking only pure nourishment, then one can create a pure body in the next life. So this should be our understanding that the cosmic progenitor, Brahma, is also prana. He's air and fire. That air, when it's blown on a fire, makes it blaze up. So by the uh, cultivation of prana, pranayama, that makes the fire of life strong, and this fire is called the fire of digestion, vaishvanara. When the fire of digestion is strong, then the food can be completely assimilated. Otherwise, if there's incomplete digestion, it causes disease. This is the foundation of Ayurveda. To create a complete digestion, not overeat, and not eat when one is not hungry, because in those cases the fire gets blanketed, you know, snuffed out. The fire should remain strong. And then when the food is fully digested, it gives a lot of energy to the prana. And also, if the food is good quality, it creates pure prana, leading to pure body in the next life. Or not only the next life, in this life. Because every seven years, all the cells in the body, except for some bones and nerve system cells, are renewed. So you are what you eat. And if you eat junk, <laughs> your body is unhealthy, toxic poisonous. And that leads to taking a very low grade of body in the next life. So instead, we should be cognizant of how our eating, and especially how offering the food to God, affects our health in this life and the class or grade of body that is available in the next life. If we eat only food which is offered in sacrifice, slaha, into the fire, huh? offering the first morsel, the first serving of food, then the prana is kept clean. God is satisfied. The sun smiles on us and gives abundant health and intelligence. And we can understand the scriptures. And we can go forth from this life to a full enlightenment in the spiritual world 
and never to return to this world of suffering. This is the aim of this Upanishad. Aum Tatsa Aum Shakti Aum Aum Namah Shivaya <laughs>